Hello, this is Kevin Olson from TextLearn.com, and welcome to lesson 3.4 of the Intro to Java series. In this lesson, we will be discussing the compare to method. Now, you can take a look at the text online at my website, TextLearn.com. The link is in the description. So, what is the compare to method? The compare to method can be used to determine if one object is greater than less than or equal to another object. Different objects have different compare to methods and therefore may function slightly differently. For integers, we could simply check if to see if one integer was equal to another using the equal to operator. This is not the case for objects such as big decimals. If we use the equal to object or equal to operator, Java will check to see if the objects themselves are equal. So if we had an object A and an object B, and they both have the same value, let's say we have two big decimals with a value of 1, Java will see object A, and it'll see object B. And it'll say those two are not equal to each other, even though they have the same exact value, because they are separate objects. So it says these objects aren't equal to each other because they're not the same thing. So now if the now to check if the object values are equal to each other, we have to use the compare to method. And the syntax for that is we have our first object variable over here, and we use dot compare to, so the compare to method. And then there's some other object variable over here. And this will return a value less than zero if the first object is less than the second object. It'll return a value equal to zero if the first object is equal to the second object, and it'll return a value greater than zero if the first object is e or greater than the second object. Now with big decimals, it works a little differently. It returns negative one if the first decimal is less than the second big decimal. It returns zero if the first big decimal is equal to the second big decimal, and it returns one if the first big decimal is greater than the second big decimal. So that still follows along with the rule that it's less than, greater than zero. But just note that with the big decimals, it actually returns negative one, zero, and one. But many other objects will return some other number that's not just going to be a solid negative one or positive one. It'll return something like, for example, with strings, it might return the difference in length of the string and things like that. But the return value of equal to zero is always pretty much the case when the objects are equal. So without further ado, let's get Eclipse up and running here. And I will show you how this all works. So let's create two big decimals. Big decimal a decimal equals new big decimal and we will give that a value of one. Now I need to import the big decimal into our program, so I'm going to use the Eclipse Quick Fix and do that. So now we have import java.math.bigdecimal up there, and I'll create my second big decimal, b decimal equals new big decimal, and we'll also give this a value of 1. But let's see what happens if we check to see if those two are equal using the equal to operator, which I said will not work. So if a decimal equals b decimal, we'll do system out print line they are equal. Now let's do else system out print line they are not equal. So with integers we would expect that to return that they are equal or print that they are equal. We run this and what did I do wrong? Errors exist in project. I don't see any. Proceed. Okay, did I forget something? Aha. There we go. Alright, so it says they are not equal. And that is, like I said, because a decimal is a separate object than b decimal, so it's going to say that they are not equal, even though they have the same exact value. So we have to use the compare to method. So we'll do a decimal dot compare to b decimal, and that's going to return a value equal to zero if they are equal. So we're going to say equals zero. So that'll be 0 equals 0, which means that they are equal. We run that, and now it says they are equal as we would hope it would do. 
Now we can change a decimal and b decimal. So I'm gonna make b decimal two, and now it will say they are not equal. Okay. Next thing, we can do greater than zero, and that'll mean that a decimal is greater than b decimal. So we'll say a decimal is greater than b decimal. Else, system out print line. A decimal is equal to or less than B decimal. We'll run that. And now it'll say A decimal is equal to or less than B decimal because, of course, 1 is less than 2. Now, if we change the value of A decimal to 5 and we leave B decimal at 2, we run that. And it'll say A decimal is greater than B decimal because this, in this case, will return a value of positive 1 that's greater than 0, and we know that the first decimal is greater than the second decimal. We could also do equals to 1, and we'll get the same exact result because, like I said, the compare to method for big decimals returns negative 1, 0, or positive 1. So that is in essence, the compare to method. I hope you understood that all right. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to post in the forums at textlearn.com. Now, we do have a review exercise for this topic now to kind of wrap things up here. So this is the last section of topic three. And the review assignment here is to create a bracketed income tax calculator. So let's read the instructions and see what the goal here is. So create a program that calculates income tax based on up to three different predefined tax brackets using big decimals. Currently, the federal tax brackets for an income for an individual on income in 2013 are as follows. So in 2013, up to $8,925, that was taxed at 10%. From that amount up through $36,000, it was taxed at 15%. And $36,000 to $87,000 was taxed at 25%. So if you're not familiar with how tax brackets work, I'm just going to explain that real quick. So this means that the first $8,925 would be taxed at 10%. And then the next $27,000 or $27,000 between around $9,000 and $36,000 is taxed at 16 or 15%. And then the final amount from $36,000 up through $87,000 is taxed at 25%. And I'm expecting you to use if then else statements to get this to work properly, along with, of course, the big decimal compare to method to compare the big decimals. So we are going to be putting these income taxes in big decimals, then splitting them up into each of the tax brackets and calculating the percent owed on each tax bracket. So let's take a look at the sample output here. Please enter your annual income from the last year. So let's say someone puts in the number 50,000, so that means they made $50,000 in the year. And then it calculates, okay, you owe $892.50 in tax, tax bracket 1, $4,000 in bracket 2, and $3,400 in bracket 3. Then it adds all those up, so the total taxes is $8,400. Then it subtracts the t total taxes from the total income, and it prints out the take-home pay, which in this case would be $41,000. And if they enter an amount over the third bracket, so we're getting into the fourth bracket now, I don't need you to go on. You can make more brackets if you want to, but this program in this example doesn't calculate beyond the third bracket. So if we put in $100,000, it calculates the amount owed on the first three brackets, and then it just prints out a message that says, Amounts over third bracket are not calculated with this program. Total taxes and take-home pay could not be calculated. All right, and the solution is available on the website as well, so take a look at that if you have any problems. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.